Foundation 45 is a 501c3 nonprofit that funds counseling services for mental health, addiction, and suicide survivors. In addition to providing services, it works to break the stigma surrounding these topics. Foundation 45 recognizes that musicians, artists, and creative types are often at a higher risk for issues with mental health and addiction. The organization's goal is to serve the Dallas-Fort Worth creative community by providing free, top-tier mental health and recovery services. You can learn more about Foundation 45 at foundation45.org. Foundation 45. Live fast, die old. I'm Andrew Sherman. I'm a Texas transplant who has always been in pursuit of art as a career. I've played in bands, pursued an acting career in Hollywood, but I found it behind the lens of a camera here in Dallas, Texas. I was born in New York, I've lived in Chicago, Los Angeles, Austin, but I love Dallas. There's a magical artistic scene in Dallas that mostly goes unnoticed to the outside world. This podcast is focused on what makes it so special and the people who make it thrive artistically. If you don't live here, and even if you do, you might not have heard of them. This is the Dallas Famous Podcast. This week on the Dallas Famous Podcast, it's Jared Ray Redding. Jared almost doesn't need an introduction as the frontman of legendary pop punk group Bowling for Soup, but with Redick, that's just the tip of the creative iceberg. Bowling for Soup was nominated for a Grammy for their theme song on Phineas and Ferb, and Redick also voices the lead singer of Love Handle. Redick has been the voice of Chuck E. Cheese since 2012, and he's also started his own country band. This is both a fun chat for hardcore BFS fans as well as a great way to get to know this down-to-earth superstar. I hope you dig my chat with Jared Ray Reddick. Well, we are rolling. Whenever you're ready, your show. Cool. Hey, I am super excited to say that I'm here with Jared Ray Reddick. We're in his home studio, the daycare. That's right. And uh, wow, this is like a museum in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of starts out as one of those things where it's like, you can't really, you're, you know, I've got a wife, so I can't really build a shrine to myself in my house. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to joke because it, I used to have a lot of riders coming in and out of here. And uh, I would be like, this is just so that when the rider comes in here, they just know like, hey, we're not we're not fucking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know who you were, you'd walk in and you go, I've been living under a rock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, yeah. And honestly, I'll be honest. I kind of was a little bit uh, in the sense that I, I missed some of your like uh, voiceover stuff like mm. it was interesting to like just dig in about you yeah but i want to start with uh charles entertainment cheese yeah is that yeah. still something you're doing it is yeah like uh i think it's at 12 years 11 or 12 years now yeah since i uh became that mouse and uh yeah still plugging away how did that happen how did that fall into that injury? man lap? it's like many other things that you're probably going to ask me about but uh you know i'll i'll set those up probably the same way um you know i, I th things have just sort of come to me in the past and this is not uh unlike that i i was doing improv comedy here um in there was a place called ad libs here for a really long time huh, okay and i took a class there and that ended up being um, my teacher and I, Dan Glazer and I started uh, our own troupe and right around the same time, uh, the, the Chuck E. Cheese thing was, was shifting and they were going to rebrand. And so two guys that had done improv at ad libs got the account. They were working for a big, um, advertising firm here in town. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> they were going to make him a rock star. And they had seen me do improv. They knew who Bowling for Soup was. And so they made a reel and essentially pitched me to Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment before I ever even knew that I was up for the gig. So when I got the call, like, I sort of already had the job. Oh, wow. And so it's actually really funny. I was at the studio back then. Um, and again, this is many years ago. Um I would go in and do the commercials and stuff with them. And I went in for what I thought was an audition in May of whatever year that was. And um, when I was finished, 
they were just like, okay, well, you know, that's like the first six months. So we'll see you, you know, in a few months. And my manager called and he was just like, how was the audition? I go, I don't think it was an audition. I, <laughs> I think I got the job. <laughs> Your manager didn't even know. My manager didn't even Wild. know. Wild. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, so it's been great. I, I love it so much. Now, a lot of things have changed through the years, but I still pretty much, I, that, that particular company is no longer um, working for the main company, but the, the guys that I work with, like when I'm doing the show and stuff, uh, for, for the restaurant are all the same. Okay. And so, uh, Matt Daniel, who is, uh, the main entertainment guy there has been there every, pretty much everything that I've ever done. And, uh, and so we have a really great working relationship and, and so, you know, it's evolved so much. I mean, COVID sort of helped get it to where I wanted it, which was, I want to do it from here, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know? And yeah. cause I'm just really fast. And even if it means like I do something and send it in and they just, they want me to redo it. It's still faster than someone else trying to engineer me. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. If you're a pro and yeah. what you're doing and you're doing it for so long. Yeah. And you know, I, I definitely, um, I mean, I just have my methods and stuff. I mean, I even really, there's, you know, singing and stuff and, and doing vocals and things like I would rather either my best friend Linus or do it myself, engineer it just because of just of speed, you know? Right. Cause you're just not having to go, okay. Yeah. Let me try that again. You, you've already clicked the button and you're already going. Okay. You know? So then, I mean, now we're going to a different direction on here, but so then you feel like your engineering skills are to the point or is it just for your vocals you're talking about? Yeah, no, I am definitely, so I, I can engineer pretty much whatever, but I, I am not, definitely not a pro. I'm not like into sounds or gear right. or anything Right, you can't like go, that. someone's like, I want that to sound like this. It's not necessarily where you're going to. I could do it, but I, it's not my thing. You know, I, I, I look at it like this. I, um, when I start, when I finally got Pro Tools, gosh, I guess, you know, 20 years ago, um, I learned a certain amount of things that helped me get by. So I can make my own demos. They sound amazing. Um, I can, I can engineer my own vocal. I can engineer somebody else's vocal. I can do, uh, instruments and stuff in here. But like, if I were to go into like a big studio, um, I would need to leave it to somebody else. Right. And if, if you're going to do another Bowling for Soup album, would you do that in a big studio or is it easier to just do it all from here? No. So what we do, um, and we, we still record all the time. Um, what we do is pretty much now we go into a drum studio or some sort of studio and do the drums live, mm -hmm. uh, in a, in, in a room. And then, um, we can pretty much do everything else here. That makes um, a lot of sense. Now, um, during, Lockdown, we went, uh, we actually took a tour bus up to the Poconos, <laughs> socially distanced, uh, got an Airbnb a mile away from a studio and made a record up there. Um, mm. And it was really just for the, the togetherness of all of it. And that's sure. the thing that we talk about all the time. Like, you know, you sort of have to weigh when you start to have kids and a family, you have to weigh that time away from home. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, we could go somewhere and make a record and man, it, I love it. And you make these lifelong memories and there's no, there's really nothing like it, you know, for our band anyway, like, you know, each album is sort of like this point in time where we have a thousand stories and amazing memories of just making this music. And then there's the ones that we make, like what I just said, and you don't really have those same memories. The problem is, is that time away from home is time away from home. And so, are we going to tour or are we going to go make a destination record? Mm -hmm. And right now the importance really for us is on touring and just making music. So it's just easier for us to, and now Rob, our bass player has, has his own studio in his house. So now, you know, we go and make the drums, the drums go, I don't even go anymore. You know, like Gary huh. goes to the drum room in right. Denton he, uh, the guy sends me the drums. I send them to Rob. Rob plays bass on them. And then he sends them to me and he's putting guitars on. I'm putting guitars on. I sing, he sings. Chris comes over, puts his stuff on and we're done. Yeah. And uh, I can do all of the little meadly meadly things in here. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, it's just sort of like weighing it, but what we talk about 
always we're, the conversation is always going of like, hey man, we need to go somewhere for a couple of weeks and make a record. Right. You know, it's funny because like you're, it's almost like you're explaining the demo process, but it's the album that you're making. Oh yeah, yeah, know? it's an album. Yeah. And like when I used to do my Tascam four track recorder and yeah. stuff, I was always like, why can't this be the way? And you're. It can be now. It I mean, can be. It yeah. Is. Yeah. I mean, you know, technology has changed a lot of things. I mean, did, we used to, um, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know, the the songs, I would be writing the songs and yeah, we would, you know, we would rehearse them and work them up as a band. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, very often, the guys are hearing the song the first time when they're recording them. Hmm. And, you know, there, there's no real need you know, to get together and rehearse. And, you know, I mean, again, we're not young and we, we, we don't really have the, we're not getting together and rehearsing for shows and things like that. I just, mm -hmm. you know, just the circumstances are different. Yeah. Well, also you're not a jam band. Like you don't need, yeah. your songs aren't evolving as you play them. Like you kind of right. lock them in, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's, and, and quite frankly, for the most part, you know, you're recording this new music and most of it, you're never going to play live anyway when you're, when you're us, because, we're not one of those bands that goes, hey, here's a bunch of our new stuff. I mean, you know, we have right. seven, eight, nine legitimate hits that we have to play every night. Right. Then you've got three fan favorites, you know, or four that we can sort of toggle. Okay, well, what's left? You know, well, you have to sort of fill in with meat and potatoes and things like that. So mm -hmm. we're lucky if we're even playing one or two off of a new record huh. these days. Is there, has it happened in like any of the last few where you're like you're like this is going to be one of those songs that is in the rotation yeah for sure i mean uh the the um the one from this last record pop drunk snot bread was uh <laughs> immediately when everybody heard i want to be brad pitt they were like oh my god this is yeah. going to be so great live yeah. and so it was it was in the the live rotation for about a year and then um we did a tour recently called getting old sucks and we have a song called getting old sucks so we opened up with that mm -hmm. um you know, but frankly, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult navigation because you, there's a desire to play those songs, but there's also like, we don't necessarily, we're not in the concert business, you know, I mean, this is tough. We make ourselves happy with the banter. I don't know if you've seen Bowling for Soup, but not we yet. talk a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Like whatever band you've seen that talks a lot times that by ten, that's bowling for soup. <laughs> like we talk, and we're making each other laugh. The cr a lot of people come to our shows just for the banter. Yeah. I and mean, there's dudes that bring their boyfriends that hate our band, but they're like, yeah, but you guys are funny. So yeah. I, 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 I humor. Are you my the band. only improv guy in the band? I am, trained? but but the guys could you know again they're all amazing at yeah. just backing the, backing it up, and that's, th and that's what's awesome. I mean, I wanted to be a stand up comedian, and this gives me the opportunity to do right. both. You know? Right, but you know, you you find yourself, you know, constantly going back to there's, you know, we have three albums that everybody in our audience for the night has, you know, which is Drunk Enough to Dance, Hangover You Don't Deserve, and Great Burrito Extortion Case. Now, a lot of people have the newer records, but everybody has those three, right? You know, so you you find yourself, you know, wanting to make sure that you're pleasing everybody. So. And then, you know, there's a couple of times where we'll just throw in some random old song. Um, but for the most part, you know, you, 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 you're you wanting to play the songs that get everybody singing. Right. And so, like, none of them, you're not sick of playing any of them. You've done them so much. It's, you still love them. Oh, man. You know, it's, it's a, we've toured with the one hit bands that, like, hate their hit. Right. You know, because for the most of the time what happens is is that song doesn't sound like the rest of their songs so they hate it mm -hmm. it's a couple from dallas <laughs> yeah um i think of blind melon when you say that uh sure i mean i i would I, you would but you know when you're so they get to where they just they can't stand that song so they'll open up with it you uh -huh. know and yeah, then get out of the way half the crowd leaves you know and it's right. like I don't know how you could ever get sick of something like that and and maybe it's because all of our hits sound like our band Mm -hmm. But uh, you ever get sick of playing "Girl the Bad Guys" one? And I'm like, when I hit the first two notes of that riff, the entire audience loses their mind. Yeah. Why would I ever get sick of that? Yeah. You know, 1985. We, you know, we just, you know, people know when it's coming because it's last. Uh huh. And and just the energy and wh why would I ever get sick of it? Yeah. Hearing the audience sing "High School Never Ends" back to me, you know, like 
Phineas and Ferb theme. You know, like, again, it, the, the list goes on. I'm not flexing. I'm just saying those are those songs in the set where people would be like, you know, would you ever leave Almost out? I'm like, not on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, that energy and, like, people, like I, I did see, I have seen your, your solo band. And I did see 1985, the last show, and it was just, yeah. it was a joy. I was like, I wasn't expecting your other band to play it, and I was just like, right. stoked to see it. Yeah, we know? do a country version of it, yeah. and uh, yeah. the fiddle I, takes the lead. And So that that was the next, uh, another question. So like, yeah, how does the, obviously it's your music, like exclusively, but how does that differ, the solo versus Bowling Pursuit? Um, well, I mean, you know, the solo thing is, yeah, it's my stuff, Um you know, and it's a band. I mean, I have to pay the guys to be in it. Right, right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You know, um, but we're we're functioning as a band. Um, I mean, I guess the biggest thing is that that Bowling for Soup pays the bills, and quite frankly, right now, Jarrett Ray Reddick is is costing me a shitload of money because mm -hmm. I'm investing in it. You yeah. know, and I'm buying gear, and I'm you know I bought a van. And but what uh, like because you can't get those songs out in that way in Bowling for Soup? Like, what's the what's the push? Oh, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Uh, well, I you know but why. Why do a country band end Bowling for Soup? Yeah. Yeah, so I always wanted to do a country record. I grew up uh, in Wichita Falls, Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, Waylon and Willie were king. Uh, I love the storytellers, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton. I, I That's my shit. Uh, the Eagles is my jam. You know, like, I uh, I don't know if we're still saying that, kids. I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> the, the Eagles are, like, I mean, that's the be-all, end-all for me as far as harmonies and stories and Oh gosh, you just can't. I, their 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 music is just you know for me it's this it's it's the same as when I found Ozzy Osbourne and then later on when I found the Descendants you know it's it's just life changing to me, and you know th I always wanted to do a country record but I'm in a pop punk band that has been together thirty years as of next year hmm. you know and we're you know a staple and you know if you Wikipedia pop punk I'm sure we're there as you know. Oh, absolutely. As the creators, oh, a, a yeah. par partial creators of this founding, genre, founding, founding members, members yeah. of founding, yeah. founding band of this genre. And, 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 and in no way, again, do I mean that as a flex? It's just reality. It's, we didn't know we were doing that. Right. You know, we, we were just playing this kind of punk, this punk rock and adding this melodic thing to it while Blink-182 was doing it over there. And while Sum 41 was doing it up there and, and Newfound Glory was doing it down there, you know, right. we were sort of all doing it at the same time. And all of a sudden, you know, here it is. And so we're just our thing and we're also funny. And so to do a country record with Bowling for Soup to be like Bowling for Soup goes country or something, I was a little, I just didn't want it to be seen as a novelty. Yeah. And also we just didn't need it. Um, yeah. You know, this is when I finally got the chance to do the country record. We were coming out of lockdown, not out of lockdown, going into the second year of lockdown. Bowling for Soup had already taken the tour bus up to the Poconos. We had already done a new record. And here I am sitting in this this very room that we're in right now. I'm a year in. I had done a hundred and something online shows. I had made a new Bowling for Soup record and it was like, okay, <laughs> now what? Right. You know, like, That's, do I yeah. just regurgitate all that and do it again? You know, yeah. I mean, you got to keep your, and, and, you know, I'm like everybody else. I could have went and cleaned the garage, but I, you know, we weren't motivated to do that kind of shit, uh -huh. you know? And Zach Malloy from the Nixons, um, who is also a, a prolific country writer and uh, rock producer and, and writer, um, I finally just said, dude, this is the time. We've got the time. Let's do this. And so we did it. And, uh, you know, I, I think at first it was like, oh, okay, I'll do this record and I'll play a few shows. And I played my first couple of shows and then I was like, I'm going to buy a van. And, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then the guys started to get into it. You know, at first my band were like, well, I'll have to check with work or whatever. And now right. my dudes are like, whatever we got to do, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so it doesn't hurt that Rob from Bowling for Soup, my bass player is also in my country band and, and that keeps things. And my, uh, two of my crew guys are the same. And, uh, so, you know, I have this sense of normalcy, but, you know, Jason, Ryan and Keith, uh, the other members of the band are just so, uh, great and they're into it and their personalities just fit so perfect. And, yeah, uh, and fun. It, it, we're having, we're having a blast. And also sure. now that I've talked to you, it's like, it makes sense. Like how would you fit an album worth of solo songs into a Bowling for Soup show? Ever? Sure. You yeah. Oh, you wouldn't even be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that's just, again, I, I, uh. 
I didn't really, I, man, I've done so many other things over the years. I know you're just getting to know me, but I've, you know, I've, I've got, I've did a solo pro- project or not a solo, a duo called People on Vacation for several years. I've, I've got a, another thing that I do called Jarrett and Kelly with Kelly from the Dolly Rots. I've got another thing that I do with my best friend Linus called Jarinus. Huh. Um, so I've done all the side project stuff. Right. You know. Well, and you dreamed with the Nixons I saw too. I did. Yeah, that was just that was just for fun. <laughs> That's yeah. wild. I was yeah. like, what the okay. Yeah. And just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was just for fun. That would but, be fun. Uh, I've always wanted to just I did drum a little bit. I would that would be a blast. Like after all the other stuff you do, just, I'm just gonna go and drum and I don't yeah. have to worry about any of that other yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun time. I uh I well I, I'm an educated drummer, so I actually started playing drums as a kid mm-hmm. and uh played drums until I we couldn't find a singer uh, when I was about 17 and then I started singing. And then, uh, you know, a year or so after that, you, nobody would write songs. So I just bought a guitar and started writing songs. Right, right, right. And then it's just interesting. I mean, I guess you kind of covered it because you're talking about some of the bands that like your, your pathway from country to what became power punk. Not that you knew that's what it was. Yeah. But that's interesting too. Um, I mean, so when you were doing it, like when you were playing, when you guys were first playing live, was there anything else like you locally? Oh, no, no. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, not even like us locally. So we were from Wichita Falls. Right. So uh, people up, the bands up there were doing great that were doing, you know, Smith's covers and The Cure and, you know, things right. like the REM okay, and things so like that. Like it was a new wave era kind of. I mean, and, you know, it was, this was, uh, we, we started, this band started in 94. So, I mean, they were doing stuff off the radio and smithereens and, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, so, no, we couldn't really get people to pay attention to us. Um, and so we moved to Denton and, the minute we got to Denton, it was like we were this fresh new thing. Oh yeah. And everybody just bought in quickly. And then Dallas was weird because, you know, we were king shit in Denton, but we were still trying to break Dallas. Mm. And uh, it was just all a matter of just relationships, you know, meeting other bands and those bands giving us a shot. And, you know, with every opener that we did for Hagfish or Grand Street Criers or, you know, um, the Nixons, you know, that the next show that we played off the beaten path, you know, on our own was just bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, we, we had to work at it because there was nobody like us. There was, there was no, we didn't play any bills where there was like another band and we were like, oh shit, that there's another band huh. that sounds that like us. My, I mean, it's never hard happened. to imagine, but yeah. I, I, I get it. But it's just like now you're like, well, how could that be? But yeah, yeah. Like, there was nothing. Nothing. I mean, and so, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it makes sense. Like your, your, your influence is really, made this new sound like i would have never guessed country was part of it yeah from the outset you know if you listen lyrically now that you know that then yeah. you'll you'll it'll make a lot it's of sense because i'm i'm just not super poetic i there's not a lot of hidden meaning in what i'm saying i'm yeah, saying what i'm saying but you're so amazing at just you just say all of it mm-hmm. in such a way i i don't even i don't even want to critique it i'm just saying like Cause like 85, that song, like I knew that song long before I knew the name bowling for sure. sure. I just knew the song. And then when I started connecting it, I, yeah, no, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's I, well, also not to, well, go ahead. Go no, ahead. from a songwriting perspective is like you, you sort of, I felt like where you were heading with it was something Zach said to me a long, long time ago. We were writing, um, trying to write some bowling for soup songs way back in the day when I had first started co-writing like 2004 or something like that. And Zach was trying to break into the songwriting world, and I was such a huge fan of the Nixons, so I was like, well, let's just write some songs together, you know? And uh, and he would say something, we need to say something like this, and I'd go, why don't we just say that? <laughs> you know? And that, to me, is still what I take oh, into every session that I so, do, you know? It, it's like, funny, because, like, that that clicked in with your lyrics. When you yeah. said that, I was like, yeah, it is that. Because exactly. yeah. I used to write songs, and I was like, I was trying to come up with something cool and yeah. what does that really mean and right. like you you ah, i wish i would have blown the doors off like you that's, <laughs> that's that's the way to do it but i mean not you know i it's funny because i i listen to other bands and in, in, even in our genre and you know they have a more po- most of them have a more poetic way of doing things and i listen to that and go well that's cool because you can kind of you have your own meaning and you do that you know whatever but i you know i i think that that's what makes Bowling for Soup very relatable to Absolutely. people? I mean, I, we sound like we sound. Like, if you come see us, we sound exactly like the CD because mm-hmm. we're not doing a bunch of shit on there that you can't do live. Um, we can all actually sing. 
But the other thing is, is that like, you know, the, the beat is something that people appreciate, but you can understand what we're saying, mm -hmm. you know, and it's lyrically and enunciation wise, you know, I, it's funny. I, Green Day is one of my favorite bands of all time. I don't know any lyrics to their songs because I can't understand a <laughs> word he says still. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and my wife is like, you know the words, and I'm like, I fucking don't. Like, I'll <laughs> try and sing something, you know, and I'm just like, I have no idea what the hell he's I feel saying. Like in the future, could be a Green Day cover where you just write the lyrics that you think he's saying. <laughs> what I say, he's I want, I, I want yeah. to hear that one. Right, it, and it is funny because every once in a while I'll get one right, and my wife just, my wife just laughs because I sing along with the radio all the time when we're in the car, but I don't know the words to anything, <laughs> and uh, pretty funny. That is funny. So, yeah, we touched on it, too, but, you know, you had this whole other career with yeah. your voiceover. I mean, we talked about Chuck E. Cheese, but Phineas and Herb, like, yeah. talk about that a little bit. How did that happen? So, again, <laughs> this is, again, one of those things. It just sort of comes to me. Um, that show was created by Dan Povenmire and Swampy Marsh, who were writers together on The Simpsons. Oh, okay. Dan went on to work on Family Guy. Um, original director and uh, one of the original writers and Swampy went on to create a show called Rocco's Modern Life mm -hmm. so uh, fast forward a few years and Dan has this idea about Phineas and Ferb and they meet in a restaurant and he draws it on a napkin um, the characters and those that napkin is still framed in their offices huh. and <clears throat> but one of the things that they had found um, was that, that that in that Simpsons writer room, they all, for some reason, liked Bowling for Soup. And Dan was a huge Bowling for Soup fan. And so I guess through the development of this show, I was just the guy. They huh. wanted me to sing that song. They wanted Bowling for Soup to, to do the theme. And so when that um, when it came time for that meeting, I went in. And uh, they were like, hey, so we've got this theme song, but we want you to take that this theme song and make it into a song song. So, like, here's this 45 seconds of material. Can you make it into a three-and-a-half-minute song? Sure. And so I, I uh, that's the meeting that I had. And, and they were like, and we want you to sing the theme. And I'm like, sure, yeah, I'm, I'm in. But they were like, we also hear that you are interested in voiceover. Now, this is pre-Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, do you want to go read? And I'm like, I really do. So I read for the part of Swampy um, in the band Love Handle, um, who was the drummer. And that part ends up being gotten by Steve Zahn. I got lead. Oh. Si I got the lead singer. I got uh, Dan, Danny, uh, which turned into lines throughout all the seasons. And uh, But not, not only that... They gave me an open door anytime I wanted to come in and write songs for the show. If I was in L.A., they'd just take an afternoon, we'd write a song, and next thing you know, I'd be on the show. So I had four or five songs um, on the series uh, and then a couple in the movie and, uh, and, and got to voice Danny as well. That's wild. And, but, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's wild because – well, I was I was just telling the story the other day. I I was in um I was in the airport one day. I was in line with Gary, <clears throat> my drummer, at Starbucks, and I I was just standing with him bullshitting because I don't I don't really drink coffee, and uh, and he said something, and I was like, oh, and the and I did my excited voice, which is now Chuck E. Cheese, pretty much. But <laughs> this kid is in front of me and just turns around and he just goes, "You're Phineas and Ferb." <laughs> and he just recognized my voice oh, wow. and uh and i just thought man wow what a and that was the beginnings of that you know and that yeah. show went nine years and is now coming back wow. it's coming back oh yeah oh cool yeah. 40 more episodes whoa wow okay um so now you okay you have kids yeah. You have all this. You have don't drink coffee. How when how are you awake right now? <laughs> like I, I don't even understand. Yeah, I mean I I will drink coffee from time to time. It's but not very very little. Like okay. I I um sometimes on the road the guys will have one and I'm it's not really my thing. I'll drink iced tea. So uh, I'll tell you. Um and this is a good time to talk about it cuz it's it's the new year. I 
was addicted to Diet Coke from the age of 17. Oh, wow. I would pound them. And my favorite thing in the world was getting up in the morning and having a Diet Coke on an empty stomach. I loved it. Oh, wow. like, I loved that feeling of just that acid and carbonation down in my empty belly and just <laughs> rotting away all of my insides and shit. And I just loved it, right? Because, you know, you can pour that on a trailer hitch and it, and it cleans it. So I just, I'm just my, like, my <laughs> belly is the trailer hitch of the day. And uh, so I... I loved it. Well, 2023, I quit drinking sodas. I haven't had one in over a year now. Oh, nice. And uh, so I'll tell you, I just pound water all day. And I was always been a big water drinker. But uh-huh. um, yeah, so I don't, I work a lot. I, I, I don't sleep probably as much as I should, um, but I figure it out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you're, I see you've got a bunch of touring coming up with Bowling for Soup. Man, Bowling for Soup is nuts. Uh this year is 30 years. That's so amazing. So we start the year in Florida and uh, New Orleans and then Rock Boat. And then we go to the UK for our biggest tour ever with Less Than Jake and the Vandaliers from yes, here. Yes, it's amazing. And then to Canada. And then uh, summer, we our actual birthday is June the 4th. And we will start our 30-year tour. But it also is 20 years of a hangover you don't deserve, which is our biggest record. Right, wow. So it'll be 30 years all year. And then uh, the U.S. version of the tour that goes from <clears throat> off and on from June to like October. But it's really what it is, is like three. We changed the way that we toured um, after I had my second kid. Um, and especially after I got divorced, which was um, back in like 2013. Uh, we, we really just had to reel it in. So we're only gone about two weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. Two, 17 days is like the max. And then, at, but after that, like we're home for a while. Yeah. So um, when I say we're going to tour the U S it'll be like, okay, we're going to go out for two weeks. We come home for like three. We mm-hmm. go out for two weeks. That, we come home for like three. That is sound. Like I could tour with a band like that. Yeah. That sounds like doable. Like more than that is a grind. I feel like what's funny is, is that people used to think we were crazy and now they all do it too. Yeah. So like now less than Jake tours like that. MXPX tours like that. You know, uh-huh. like all of these guys that are dads are like, oh, okay, well, we like that, you know. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, there's the simple plans and the Sum 41s of the world that will go out still for like three months. Uh-huh. And uh, I shot them at the So What Festival for one of the two because they play back to back. And sometimes I'm, I don't have my earplugs in. And so I'm shooting them and I'm like, oh, God damn it. This is the loudest band I've ever shot. And I don't have my earplugs That's in. That's some 41. Yeah. No, yeah. I did have my earplugs in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it killed me. That was like the loudest show I've ever shot. If you just watch their drummer, Frank, play, like he is hitting the drums so hard that it, it just, I, 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 they have to be changing his heads every uh, night. Every night. Like, I mean, I it's, it's crazy. That but is crazy. They, they are very, very loud. Yeah, I, it was. I guess I'm old because I was like, what's, but everybody around me is like, yeah. yeah. So I, you know, when your shirt's blowing from yeah. the sound, it's too loud. That's, yeah. my, that's my gauge. But um, uh, yeah, and I saw you're going to do Lava Cantina. I'm going to be at that show for sure. Yeah. So um, we've celebrated our birthday at Lava Cantina the better part of the last five, six years. Okay. And um, so this is a two-nighter. One night we'll celebrate 30 years. One night we'll celebrate the 20 years of the record. And that'll kick off the... Uh, that's As what I was going to ask you too. Is that something where you're going to play the whole record on the yeah. tour or just at that show? We're going to play the whole record on the tour. Okay, so cool. the first night I believe is 30 years. So we're going to play stuff from like the first couple of records and like, and really try and celebrate the 30 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the sec, and then the second night we'll play the whole hangover. You don't deserve record. And then that will start the U S tour of us playing Hangover We Don't Deserve, um, right. the entire thing. That's, I'm that's, not certain that we're going to do it back to or front to back. Yeah. Um, I, we are going to play the songs. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've watched less than Jake do it. And I, I don't know if I'd be throwing them under the bus when I said, I just see the misery. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. You know, like I, I of just like going out and sort of just going through the motions of like, right. ah, okay. Cause Bowling for Soup doesn't even use a set list, you know? Right. And we, we have, so we do have a list of songs now. We didn't used to do this, but now we have a, it are, we, we have a thing that looks like a set list in front of all of us. And at the top it says songs Bowling for Soup may play tonight. And uh-huh. it's just a list of a shitload of songs that right. we, we, 
don't need any prep to do. Right. You know, so, um, so I don't know. I, I I would like to approach it in a way that Bowling for Soup would. So it, I have some time to think about it. It sounds like it would make sense to just let it rip and just be sure you get all those songs in, in the set list. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, but because the thing is, is that and especially back in the day for for bands like us that were that crossed over into pop radio, you front loaded the record so heavy because several things. Um, actually, no, this isn't even th- I mean, this has always been this way it since the CD revolution res- because listening stations. So you front loaded the record so because if somebody was in the record store and put the headphones on you wanted them to to be to to stay to buy the record. Right. So then iTunes comes around. If you remember the first days of iTunes all you got was 30 seconds of the first 3 songs mm-hmm. before you bought the shit. Right. Right? And so that's the same thing. So they're all front loaded. So all those records are so front loaded. And so it's like, okay. <laughs> like if we do Hangover you don't deserve, it's like uh Almost 1985 and Ohio are all in the first four songs. Right. So it's like, okay. And now here's here's 10 more songs that you may or may not I mean, know. Obviously, just play it in reverse. Right. That's, That's a good idea, actually. You, go, you know, then you get it all. But like people are like, they know, but that it's not the same. That's a really good idea. Uh, <laughs> play it backwards. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. maybe there'll be some hidden messages. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, man, there's still so much to talk to. I don't know where we're at with time, but um, I know that you were doing podcasting as well. Yeah. Are you still doing those? Yeah, so I uh, at one point was doing four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am down to one, and uh, it's Rockstar Dad Show. Mm. It's actually, it actually comes out on Adobe Radio uh, on Mondays, and then Wednesdays it goes to podcast form. And it's um, it started in a swimming pool. <laughs> uh, my drummer and I, drinking beers and just Gary and I talking about kids. And it was like, man, it's weird. Cause this is like what we talk about. And this is a show. Yeah. Cause this is what we talk about when we are backstage with our friends and, and it's like, but it's the thing that nobody gets asked about. Like, huh. you know, yeah. you don't, you don't, when you see an interview with somebody like a Bowling for Soup interview, you get, how'd you get the name of the band? Yeah. We're, we're, you know, what, you know, whatever. Are you bowling to earn soup or, you know, and, you know, whatever, <laughs> right, right. you know, so it's like, and fine. You know, if that's what your readers want to read, that's fine. I'll answer the question, but it, it's like, we, we, we get guests on and we're like, Hey man, you know, like what's your, what, what's family time like for you guys? You right, know, like right. how old are your kids? What's been the biggest, you know what's you know just everything and uh so we have uh rock stars actors comedians but we get our neighbors we get uh uh, anybody entrepreneurs and uh we talk about dad stuff but you know the show also as you anybody listening to this interview can tell goes off the rails quite a bit i mean sometimes (laughs) we just don't even talk about our kids pardon (laughs) (laughs) no that is the theme of the show as long as we talk about dallas somewhere yeah i i i very seldom you know uh, can stay on topic but yeah so rockstar dad show um is is the only one that i'm that i'm still doing okay cool um Last question: I, Are you? I mean, do you know about bands around locally? Is there anybody that you're, you have your eye on that you just like really are digging what they're doing? You know, I wish I did. I wish I was more in touch with the local scene. I mean, obviously, I love the Vandaliers, right? Um, and uh, would do anything for those guys. I just met Joshua. Joshua, man, his name is so hard to say. Joshua Ray Walker. Joshua yeah. Ray Walker. Yeah. But try to say it fast. I will not. Yeah, right. You can't do <laughs> I it. I already know I can't. Joshua Ray Walker. Now, yeah. if I focus, you got to like aim your mouth at the mic uh-huh. to do it. Joshua Ray Walker. Damn, see, yeah. fuck. Yeah, and try hitting the notes he's hitting. <laughs> <laughs> right while you're doing it, Joshua. <laughs> well, uh, either either way. Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I I seldom get to go out anymore because when I'm home, I'm home. Yeah, you I know. I uh, and and I have a whole other life here. You know, I I I have neighbors and and family and that I spend time with, and so uh, and I think everybody understands this. You know, like I I feel like. When you know, used to when I would say, you know, oh man, I don't really know what's going on in the local music scene, I would feel some guilt. But I think people understand that, like, dude, you're on the road, you know, however many months a year, you know, 
<laughs> spend some time with your family. Yeah, you know? no, it's it's hard. I, I just was asking because I, I know the Vandaliers is a connection and they are local, but they're they're getting past yeah, that. Yeah, now, you yeah. Know? I always love it though when we do meet somebody and and things like that. And I, and I will say that from the on the country standpoint of things. You know, I I am getting my finger on the pulse a little bit more because I'm on that level. Right. You know, I'm I'm yeah. still very much a an up and coming guy who's you know trying to get people to come see me. You know. Right. Yeah, you're playing smaller venues. I mean, I I it's funny too because I I shot you at Legacy for the Rob Morrow, and then I saw you at Longhorn, and I did see a huge. Like, I felt like you guys were, like, owning it more. Like, I think oh, the first yeah. show, you were just kind of getting your feet wet. I don't know if that was your first show. No, you're you're exactly right. Yeah. Like, our, um, <clears throat> we have, this band has evolved a lot. But, yeah. I mean, not only in, I mean, uh, for example, I mean, when we first started this, our, our first show was in uh, August of 2000 and, uh, two, two, 2022. And, uh, and we, our very first show was opening up for Brie Bagwell at Green Hall, and it sold out. Oh, wow. Huge. Yeah. And I, you know, I was like, everybody has to wear pants, and, you know, you, I'm not going to be funny. <laughs> and I'm serious. Like, I was like, I'm not going to tell jokes. Uh -huh. So, like, you got to, everybody go, I'm going to be serious. I'm not going to talk in between songs. And so it took me really evolving into being able to understand, like, hey, you know, and this is how my band explains it to me. Like just because you have a new project doesn't mean you can't be yourself. You yeah. Know? And he, and 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 this is my my fiddle player Jason, you know, telling me like people love you. Like they they don't want you to not be yourself, you know, kind of thing. And so uh you get a little bit more of that side of me now mm -hmm. at the shows. I but that's the difference. That's what it was. Like I I didn't I was like I don't remember all this banter and all yeah. this yeah, and that's and it made it more fun for sure. Right. Yeah. And well, and then the other thing musically I, I'm I'm more like, hey guys, I don't care if we sound like the record. Let's fucking rock. Yeah. You know, like I, I I made the record to be organic. I made it to be a Willie Nelson record, and we do sound like the record. But mm -hmm. we we've added harmonies where there aren't harmonies on the record. We've mm -hmm. added a shredding guitar solo where there's not. We mm -hmm. we play some songs louder than they are on the record because the live experience is just different. Yeah. And I just had to learn that. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I mean, and it's something I I was you know I'm spoiled. And bowling for soup. We can, we, we, I, I mean, I'm so fortunate when I say this and I know how blessed I am, but people are going to show up at the shows. Yep. They're going to sing the songs. And as long as we do our job, everybody's going to leave happy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, none of that is the case with Jarrett Ray Reddick. Like, I don't know if people are going to show up. I don't know if they're going to know the songs and we have to make them happy. Yeah. And so it's been an evolution. And thank you very much for pointing that out. I'm excited that you saw that. I feel that. My wife will go several months without seeing us and then see us and go, holy shit. Like, yeah. So I feel like we're getting better and better. As I said, you know, just the band's commitment to this. You know, these guys are getting paid 100 bucks a show, you know, and, and that's mm. – and I'm still losing money, but fuck mm -hmm. it. You know, like I, we're, we're in it, you know. Yeah. And uh, so – I, uh, I, and I'm loving it so much. And just the connection for me, being able to lyrically put out what I can do in the country side of things, uh, that really wouldn't make sense for me doing in Bowling for Soup. Right. You know, I think that's the answer I was trying. I couldn't get the question. But that's what I was asking you earlier. Yeah. Material wise. Yeah. yeah. I mean that, so that's just it. So in Bowling for Soup, the thing is I could put my heart out there, but for the most part, unless it's like turbulence or when we die, where it's a ballad. If I start to explore my feelings in a song, you can bet there's going to be some kind of a twist in there where I'm going to go, ah, you thought you had me, <laughs> you know, right. like, here's the funny thing that happens, you know, yeah, yeah. and uh, in the country thing, I can just go, oh, no. It gets worse, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. And so, uh, but, you know, I even, you know, song-wise, there's a couple of funny songs on my record, but... um. I uh, I am certainly not trying to make people laugh, you know, uh, all the time in the in the country world, and and uh, and it allows me to sing about things like you know, I have this whole new family that I didn't you know from uh, my biological sisters found me five six years ago, 
And so now I have these three older sisters, and then we found a younger brother back in April. Wow. And so all of us have the same dad. None of us knew each other growing up. The girls actually grew up with him in their house. They had no idea we existed. Uh-huh. We didn't have any idea we existed. Each other existed, you know. Uh-huh. And so those are things that I can sing about. You know, I'm a divorced dad. I can. My new Christmas song is about that. You know, I can uh-huh. sing about that. Um it's not really, none of that is really the kind of material that Bowling for Soup would cover. You know, right. we're more like, you know, uh, meat and potatoes fun, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it's, 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 again, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I, I didn't even know you were, you were open because I was hired by the venues. I was like, oh, wow, this is a bonus. Yeah. And, uh, and then to that Longhorn show, that was maybe the top three show of the year, just oh, yeah. fun and, and I maybe maybe Josh should open for you guys energy wise. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> but know. he ha- but he has his thing. He has his thing. You know, no question. And, and somebody, yeah, Observer just said that that show, Vandalier's show that yeah. night was the best show of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I can't I can't argue. I mean, I have opinions, but like it's they're all shows that I they're all the same level almost. Yeah, me, they're uh, those guys are special. Yeah. Josh is special. And, uh, you know, I, I, just to even be up there with those guys doing something new like this, you know, I, I, that's the thing is I, I understand what I am and what I do. Um, but I don't, I don't expect anything like right. I, you, you don't have to like it just cause it's me. Mm-hmm. And well, I would understand if you didn't. Well, I'll say that that bill felt perfect. Yeah. Like you all fit perfect. And the fact that you're going out with bandoliers makes total sense too. Yeah. So. Um, I, I'm going to wrap it up. I want to thank you so much for yeah, having me over. This of was a course. great chat. And, Thanks for uh, coming all this way. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to my first Bowling for Soup show because I've, I've only seen the solo band. So. Right. Well, come to the anniversary. Uh, it's it'll on be, my, uh, yep. It'll be super special because it's the, you know, it's there's people flying in from all over the world to celebrate. Nice. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And uh, looking forward to all the stuff coming out. Thank you. I'd like to thank my guest, Jared Ray Reddick. You can find him everywhere, but we've got the links in the show notes. Theme song, Unstoppable by Celine Narala. Thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, follow all the good stuff and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time. <laughs>